It's 2018 and I'm 29 years old. A few years earlier in my career, I had shot a series called Aqua Glam, which starred a very talented synchronized swimming group named the Aqua Lilies. And I was really drawn to synchronized swimming. I felt that the beauty of the motion in the water was contagious. And it also had a vintage glamor to it, which is something I am clearly very into. So one day I was scrolling Pinterest and I saw a photograph of this unbelievable swimming pool in Montecito, Santa Barbara area. And I came to find out it was called the Coral Casino. And we reached out to see if I could shoot a project there. And they let me know that the owner who happened to be Ty Warner had to approve of this. And I thought, oh, there's no way this is gonna happen. But it turns out that Ty Warner owned my book Beaches and was a fan <laughs> and against all odds we got approval. This is a world-class legendary members only pool club that's been around since 1937. It has more Hollywood history than you could possibly imagine. And I reached back out to the Aqua Lilies and I asked if I could hire the synchronized swimming group to come up and pose as models and also do some synchronized swimming formations in the beautiful pool. I was inspired by vintage bathing outfits, swim caps, cabanas, beach balls, even balloons. And the more we shot, the more fun we had with the stylization of the images. And the way they were posed really started to feel like a vintage photograph. And it made me realize that this series was not about synchronized swimming as much as it was about recreating vintage moments from the past with my own modern day twist. Once I made this connection, the project really started to become more timeless. I remember we shot three of the girls with their legs up with a beach ball in one of the cabanas. We also shot a girl on a vintage pink telephone taking a call from the pool. And overall, this series became an evolution from what was first synchronized swimming merged with iconic landmarks into a vintage styled photo shoot. Between when I shot the project and when it was released, Santa Barbara and Montecito sadly suffered a devastating mudslide and fire. And when they put out the first issue of Santa Barbara magazine. They chose my image from the Coral Casino to bring hope and a little bit of sunshine back to the community. And seeing that cover really made this series feel powerful. After the Coral Casino, I decided that I wanted to take my entire team out to Marfa, Texas to see the Prada installation where my whole journey began. And it was so much fun shooting new images with all of my staff there. We tossed these rainbow cowboy hats in the air and we even placed them on the awning. We hired cowboys and horses and we of course brought back shopping bags. It was just so nice to come full circle from where I had started to where I was now. So after we got back from Marfa, I couldn't stop thinking about the Coral Casino project and I had a family connection to the island of Bermuda and I've been to Bermuda a couple times and I always was in love with the old world glamour that the island just exudes. And we began to conceptualize this project that would not be limited to just a swimming pool or a members only club, but an entire island. I thought about private beach clubs, private golf courses, private homes. Just the whole spectrum of what this beautiful island represented. Bermuda is a tiny island and there was no way we could source all of the props we needed for this project. And therefore we needed to go to all of the costume wardrobe houses in Los Angeles to pull all of the clothing. And we had to go to prop houses to find all of the vintage props and then pack them in our luggage and then take them with us to Bermuda. 
So my team arrived with like all this luggage and we had to get all these permits from the island allowing us to shoot there. And we had to really rely on the generosity of the locals to help bring this project to life. The weather was so tricky that we always had to be nimble on what we were shooting and where we were shooting. And there was this one day where one of the models offered the chance for us to shoot on his family's sailboat. And it was really windy and pretty tough, but we got this great shot and we were lucky in that we found great talent and beautiful locations. There was a private home named Mount Pleasant and we parked a vintage convertible in front of it and we had a little dog and it was really just this stunning facade that I was able to add vintage wardrobe and props to to create these timeless photographs. One of my personal favorite shots was taken at the beach club and I had all of the models down on the beach and I used this giant palm tree to sort of break up the frame and the composition of the image. Looking back, it's really crazy how much we were able to accomplish in the short amount of time we were there. I mean, the logistics were crazy. There was this one shot where we had a couple up above posed with like a moped and vintage binoculars looking out at someone sailing and we had to time it to get the sail up with the wind and everything. I mean, it was crazy. We then had two sailors out at one point together and we were trying to shoot them. And it was really amazing that we we're able to accomplish every vision we had on this little island from the vintage golf and tennis and croquet to the private beach club and the private homes and estates and the vintage cars and bicycles. I absolutely loved the challenges that this project presented to us. And I knew deep down that this was just the beginning of so much more. I was hooked on creating these vintage scenes. Back in my personal life, Jeff and I decided that we wanted to purchase a small lake house in a very, very special community on Lake Michigan, where I grew up summering with my family from when I was literally one years old. And this house was a real fixer upper. I'm talking a hundred years old. And we decided to go for it and took a leap of faith bought the house and set out on a nine month remodel. This of course was extremely ambitious. It was a thrill meeting with a builder, working with a designer, conceptualizing rooms, where my artwork would hang, where our kitchen cabinets would go, where the sunroom would be. I thoroughly enjoyed this entire process, especially the design. But when you see the before pictures of the house and each room was just so basically dilapidated with the shag carpet and to the after photographs where we created this beautiful kitchen in the front of the house and an open floor plan for the living room and dining room and this beautiful new sunroom. I'm just so happy we took the risk to do the fixer upper. And Jeff and I knew this would be a place where we would have a lifetime of memories ahead of us and that it was time to start thinking about having a family. I hope that by hearing these stories, we are able to connect and that by listening to this whole journey, you are able to understand the value of your art. It's so much more than a photograph.